We are currently facing a crisis in medicine, one that I believe is much larger than any crisis we've ever faced before. It's called medical stagnation. And because of it, we're seeing these super diseases, especially cancer, that are very hard to treat and particularly difficult to diagnose. So in the next few years, we're going to be seeing these cancers that will increase their death toll by up to 200%. And currently, our medical technology, just the rate that it's going at, just isn't up to par with the rate that these diseases are mutating. And in a natural world, it's survival of the fittest. Now, what is really happening is that medical technology is really just incrementalizing. We're just incrementally improving on existing technology. And that's okay work, but okay is not acceptable when diseases are being able to kill millions and millions each and every year. And Nicholas Negroponte once said, incrementalism is innovation's worst enemy. And we've been incrementalizing in uh, medicine for quite a time. And so now it's time to get out of medical evolution and go into medical revolution. My personal story with medical stagnation began when I was 13, when a close family friend, who's like an uncle to me, passed from pancreatic cancer. All the tests missed his disease. And by the time it was diagnosed, it had metastasized, and in six short months, he died. What I then found out is that 85% of all pancreatic cancer patients are exactly like my uncle. This gives them a 2% chance of survival. And the current test, it's 60 years old. That's older than my dad. <laughs> but also, it's very expensive, costing $800 per test, and is grossly inaccurate, missing 30% of all pancreatic cancers. Learning this, I was sure there had to be a better way. And then, as I dwelve into more disease diagnostics, I realized that the case was similar all around the board. The majority of our medical technologies are, 60, are dating back to the 1960s and 1970s. And while other fields have accelerated, medical technology has remained stagnant. I mean, you don't see me carrying around a computer from the 1960s. And again, I couldn't carry around one of those things. <laughs> and so I decided to do something about it. And so using just Google and Wikipedia, I create a new way to detect pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancer that costs three cents and takes five minutes to run. It's 100% accurate and can detect the cancers in the earliest stages when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. But in addition, it's 168 times faster, over 26,000 times less expensive, and over 400 times more sensitive than our current standards for pancreatic cancer detection and it doesn't rely on things such as ELISA and other outdated medical technologies. And what we really have to see is that we really have to begin to revolutionize medical technology because really we don't have the opportunity to keep evolutionizing, or I'm not sure that's quite the right term, but um, we can't incrementally improve medicine or else we as a human species will soon be beaten out by the disease. And then when looking forward into being, looking forward to how we're actually going to do this, I'll take a note from my story. And one of the interesting facts about it is that in my story, I had no medical experience. I really, at the beginning of this, when my uncle got diagnosed, I didn't even know I had a pancreas. <laughs> so that's actually, that lack of knowledge actually worked to my advantage because when you're in the academic field of medicine for far too long, you get pigeonholed into a certain way of thinking. Because for example, say you're being taught from a professor in your medical school. He thought in a certain way and may have come up with this revolutionary technique, but then he transfers that thinking to you. And so then you're thinking of the exact same thing. And so then you're kind of trapped in the cycle where you can only incrementally improve your, that existing technology. And so, in my opinion, we really have to get beyond that and begin to kind of ignore the medical system at times. So, for the future, I believe it's very bright. And that is if we begin to value it now. In the future, we're going to have to move from symptom-based diagnostics, 
where we essentially look at your symptoms and some vitals and essentially say, mm, looks like the flu. And essentially, that only has a 55% chance of correctly diagnosing and treating you. I mean, that's worse than flipping, or that's almost as bad as flipping a coin. So why don't I just flip a coin instead of going to a doctor's appointment? It takes less time. We really have to begin to move from the subjective, broad, and generally inaccurate method of diagnosing through symptoms. I mean, I had a cold, like I had a sore throat, runny nose, and cough. I looked at my symptoms. I could be going through cocaine withdrawal, be pregnant, or have cancer, or 91 other diseases. I mean, that's quite accurate. <laughs> what we have to do is move to something that I call molecular diagnostics, where we can objectively look at proteins in your bloodstream, and essentially using intelligent algorithms, using that, tech, using that information about those biomarkers, essentially say, whether or not you have a disease based on that. And that is objective and accurate. And also, that's a possibility to personalize medicine. Because you can look at the molecular profile of each patient and then look at changes over time. And that's where my sensor comes in. And you would be able to track your levels of a biomarker over time. And from there, be able to more reliably treat and diagnose disease. So, now I believe in medicine that we have to listen to a fresh voice in order to survive, even thrive. Because, really, the old voices aren't doing us too well. And we have to listen to the teenage voice. I'm being a bit egotistical here, like most doctors. <laughs> what we really have to see is that teens are at this epitome of creativity and knowledge, where they can come up with these crazy, wild ideas but breathe life into them because they have the knowledge. And I'll end with this one last quote from my favorite movie, as any teenager would, Cloud Atlas. Our lives are not our own. We are bound to others, past and present. And with each crime and every kindness, we birth our future. What we have to realize is that the medical choices of today and the past will impact the medical lives of teens like me tomorrow. So we need to listen to the people who our, lives, who our decisions and lives will impact. So please, choose wisely. Thank you.